A lot of people ask, can the Toyota 4Runner SR5 4x4 really off-road? And the answer is yes. And today, I'm going to use this Lexus GX460 behind me to explain. Now, I know what you're thinking. This is not a Toyota 4Runner SR5, but let me explain. Welcome back to the channel, everybody. Today we're gonna to go over a common question, which is can the base Toyota 4Runner SR5 really off-road? And this is a common question uh, that many people have because at first glance it may seem that the basic Toyota 4Runner can't do all the stuff that the other trims of 4Runner can do. After all, there's many, many trims of 4Runners out there and it's hard to give it context. Where does the lowly SR5 stand in context to something like the TRD Pro or the TRD Off-Road? And the answer is very, very, very surprising. First, in order to understand, you got to understand what this vehicle is behind me. And this is a 2021 Lexus GX460. What is a Lexus G GX460? It is none other than a, than a Toyota Land Cruiser Prado. The important takeaway from this is the Land Cruiser Prado is what the Toyota 4Runner is based on. Essentially, a Land Cruiser Prado in the world market, uh, they're imported over here to America and, and rebadged as Lexus GX460s. From there, once Toyota starts removing features from this Lexus GX460, it starts to become the part of the Toyota 4Runner family. So the 4Runner is based on the GX, which is the Land Cruiser Prado. It's not the other way around. This is not based on the 4Runner. The 4Runner is based on this. The 4Runner is this with features removed. So getting back to our basic Toyota 4Runner SR5, you might be surprised to know that not very much when it comes to off-roading is removed from this foundation, this Lexus GX460. First and foremost, I want to press upon that drive to driving this Lexus GX460 off-road on many difficult trails. What I've come to conclude is that the most important factors other than four-wheel drive and obviously a low range are the amazing A-Track system and KDSS. That's it. So in other words, any Toyota 4Runner that comes with A-Track number one is pretty much good to go. Now, I mentioned KDSS because believe it or not, some people get this kind of mixed up, but KDSS actually gives you more articulation. That's why it's on the TRD off-road trim for the 4Runner and also the older 4Runner uh, trail edition. Those had KDSS. KDSS is basically a sway bar disconnect. This GX460 has it, some 4Runner models have it. Now, the Toyota SR5 does not have it, and that would be the only thing that I would be concerned about taking a Toyota 4Runner SR5 4x4 off-road. That's it. Other than that, the four-wheel drive system with its amazing A-Track system, which is a locking differential simulation that works absolutely perfectly, as long as it has that A-Track system, it's good to go. So I, but I would be concerned about the uh, KDSS because according to some sources out there, and there's one YouTuber called Tinkerer's Adventurer, and he actually measured the articulation between KDSS and non-KDSS equipped 4Runners, and he found something like 80% difference in the front. So there is an articulation difference, so that means the wheels are gonna uh, have more uh, traction with the terrain in a KDSS equipped vehicle. But you can fix that on a Toyota SR5 4Runner simply by disconnecting uh, one sway bar in link on the front and rear, effectively disconnecting your sway bar. Yes, it will be a permanent thing, but once you disconnect your front and rear sway bar manually on your Toyota SR5 4Runner, you've literally got this insofar as 
its ability to go off-road. Yes, there's some slight marginal differences, such as it may not have MTS or downhill assist or crawl control or things like that. But when push comes to shove, I'm not calling those systems gimmicks. I'm saying when things get a little dicey off-road and you're, quote, doing serious off-roading, you're not going to be using MTS or crawl control or downhill assist. You're going to be doing things manually, whether it's in four high, four low, and you're going to want maximum articulation. Take away your sway bars in your Toyota SR5 4Runner, and you've got the maximum articulation, just like KDSS on this GX460. You already have a track, just like this GX460. And that's pretty much it, because the four-wheel drive system is all the same once you get off-road. Yes, this has full-time four-wheel drive, it has a third differential, but that doesn't matter when you're going off-road, because you're going to lock this center differential in this car anyway, which is the same as having the car in four high or four low in a Toyota 4Runner SR5. So, the bottom line is, if you're willing to disconnect your front and rear sway bar on a Toyota SR5 4Runner, you can do all sorts of crazy stuff. The, our, and when, I, when I say disconnect the, four, the sway bar, it has been sources say anywhere from one inch difference to four inches difference, anywhere from 10% to 80%. I don't have the exact numbers, but the, you know, what I love having KDSS because you can definitely feel the articulation. But again, that's a problem that can be fixed. And you'd want that extra articulation when you go on trails such as this, that you see here and when it's a, it's a bunch of lumps and bumps and you can see that this is just a bunch of mounds and you're going to want those wheels to articulate and this vehicle this is the GX of course and you can see it articulating up this all these ant hills and deep ruts um, I would feel a little bit more sketchy with a SR5 Toyota 4Runner with the sway bar connected because I would want maximum articulation like you see this GX460 doing here uh, but if you, again, take away that sway bar, just delete it off your Toyota 4Runner SR5, it's going to do exactly what you see here. And rest assured, when your lowly base SR5 4Runner gets a wheel off the ground in 4 low, it will engage the A-Track system. I know on the 4Runner you got to actually push the A-Track button, but as long as you push that, when you go off-road, it's going to act and behave just like this GX. It's going to behave just like a locker. You get one wheel, two wheel, three wheels in the ground. It's going to sail up obstacles like this. The camera flattens this out, but this is absolutely almost at a 45-degree angle going through these crazy ruts. So like I keep repeating and babbling, the only concern I'd have with that SR5 is getting rid of that sway bar. And let's be honest, most people do that anyway. That's, you know, we do it to our, our regular cars around here anyway to get articulation. But you would have to be concerned if you took your SR5 on road without sway bars. Do know that it's going to have more on road body roll and you're just going to, that's just going to be after something, be something you're going to have to live with. But other than that, the SR5 has more off road credential than I think people give it credit for. Toyota wisely left the most important thing, which is the A-Track system in its base SR5, and that in and of itself is completely underrated and misunderstood. I think you've got a great value in a Toyota SR5, Toyota 4Runner. Don't let anybody tell you that a Toyota 4Runner <laughs> SR5 can't off-road. You take off that sway bar or you get the older trail edition or the newer TRD off-road edition 4Runner with KDSS and you've got this GX460 basically. If you found this video helpful, please remember to like and subscribe. Thank you and have a great, great day.